after the initial shock of how utterly infested she was, I had this feeling of just like total shame. And I thought to myself, I can't let my audience know about this. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. So it was just a few months ago, there was a sweet lady that actually is a neighbor of mine or was a neighbor of mine. And she came by and she was like, you know, I'm really worried because we're moving and I have these chickens and I really love them, but they can't come with me when I move. So would you be willing to take a few of my chickens in? And I, of course, said yes <laughs> for this particular situation. Don't be coming by dropping chickens, okay? <laughs> and one of those chickens was a Wyandotte. Her name is E.T. E.T. had a sister that looked exactly like her. Her name was Elizabeth Taylor because <laughs> I wanted to call them both E.T. because I couldn't tell them apart. But unfortunately, Elizabeth Taylor, she passed away one day. It was just a few weeks ago, really. She was in the chicken yard. I was out here. She was running for her treats. She was super happy. She was pecking and scratching. She was looking really healthy. I went inside and I like ate dinner. And when I came back outside, Elizabeth Taylor was dead. She had just, I mean, it looked like she had just collapsed where she was standing. And it's always shocking when this happens, but there is a name for it. It's called sudden chicken death. Unfortunately, sudden chicken death is not actually that uncommon, especially among production breeds. And I get messages all the time from people that are like, oh my gosh, I just, I had a chicken that suddenly died and she was totally fine. And then I went into the coop and she was just dead. And, and what does this mean? Does this mean the rest of my flock is gonna get sick? You know, what did I do wrong? And I can tell you that most of the time it has nothing to do with anything that you did. It has a lot more to do with how that chicken was bred than anything else with, you know, their genetics. I did record a whole podcast about sudden chicken death. It's got a lot of good information in it. It might make you feel better if it happened to you. And I will link that in the description. Anyway, even though I knew it was probably nothing that could spread to the rest of my flock, I was still on high alert after Elizabeth Taylor passed away. And I was, you know, keeping a really good eye on my flock and everybody else seemed fine. Until really a couple weeks ago, I noticed that E.T. was looking a little bit, I don't know, she was like, she was just walking a little bit slower. She was looking a little droopy. She was looking a little bit listless. I think something's going on with her. And at the time I had another rescue chicken that had some illness going on and I was treating her. She was being seen by a vet. So I went ahead and I sent E.T. to the vet just to get checked out because I wanted to be sure that she had the best chance. And I understand that a lot of people cannot take their chickens to the vet. So if you can't do that, that's okay. You should still have chickens, okay? I, I am able to do that and so I do it. That's why I take in so many rescue chickens because I know that I can deal with the illness. But if you're not in that situation, I don't want you to feel guilty. You have as much right as I do to have chickens. So E.T. came back from the vet and he said that he believed that she had an internal infection and he put her on some medication. So I had her and Jaja separated from the flock and everything was going fine. They seemed like they were both improving. You know, I try to check my chickens for mites and lice at least once a month. So I was going through and just kind of checking everybody. Everybody looked fine. I checked Jaja. She looked fine, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna check E.T. and see how she's doing. I picked her up, and I looked behind her neck first, and I saw that she had some lice, and I was like, oh, okay, she's got some lice, which is not uncommon, because she was sick, and that's when lice can really infest. But then I like, I turned her over, and I looked in her vent area, and she had more lice on her than I have ever seen on a chicken and I have seen a lot. Remember I rescue chickens and some of the chickens that I rescued come from all kinds of places, okay? And the vet had seen her and the vet didn't notice. And I was like, oh my gosh, I felt so bad. I felt, I just felt so guilty. 
I was ashamed and I was like, I'm not gonna talk about this on my channel because I don't want anyone to know that I've made this awful mistake. And I just treated her immediately. And I'm sorry I don't have any photos. I didn't take like pictures of the infestation. You know, honestly, like when my chickens are sick or when I'm dealing in an emergency situation, I am not putting a camera in their face. I'm concentrating on the situation I have in front of me. And especially since I didn't want to make a video about it. So here's the worst part. I had been holding her a lot because she was sick. So I was like holding her to give her medication. And there were a few times when I was like, is something on me? Like, <laughs> I, was like I was like, I feel like something's crawling on me. Now, luckily, chicken lice are host specific. So they only infect birds. They're gonna infect the chickens. They can't live on me. So even if I have some on me, they just, they can't stay because they can't survive on me. So if you have lice in your flock, like don't freak out, don't get, you know, worried that they're gonna infest your home. Humans have their own specific lice. <laughs> you know, it's like special to us. So don't worry about chicken lice, worry about human lice, okay? I did have lice once, human lice. I was at a rainbow gathering. <laughs> This was in 1995. I was living in the forest in Missouri. And when I came home, I told my mom, I was like, my, you know, my head is itching. And she checked my head. She was like, oh my gosh, you've got lice. <laughs> I was a hippie. What can I say? So I treated her right away. I am in the process of treating my flock. I'm going to treat her again, just to make sure that they're all gone. But I do wanna say that it is normal in a normal chicken flock where everyone is healthy and everything for there to be some parasitic presence in your flock. And that's both externally and internally. It's not like this huge emergency if you find a lice on your chicken that is relatively normal. What is not normal and what is a good indication that there's some imbalance going on with your flock is if you have an infestation. So if you have a chicken that obviously, you know, they've got mice all over them, then you really need to evaluate your practices. And, you know, what this taught me was, okay, this chicken was sick and I need to be more on my toes. And as soon as they're sick, check them for mites and lice. And it's funny because like, I tell my viewers to do that <laughs> and I didn't do it. And I felt really guilty, but also like the vet didn't even notice. And he's a good vet. I've been seeing him for like 10 years. The way that her feathers were and where the mites were, it was like way up underneath her tail. There were, that's where the, the infestation was and all the eggs were like there were, you know, just tons of eggs on the feather shafts. And so when I lifted her up and just looked at her, I didn't see any of that. You know, now I know I need to be, to be more vigilant, to really sit down and inspect them better. Um, but just like everybody else, I get busy, I get distracted. I didn't feel very balanced in my, in my life in that moment. But what can you do? You've got to just kind of like take a breath and bring that balance back, okay? And then look at your flock and say to yourself, how can I bring balance back to my flock? And that's that's what it's about. I've been checking all my chickens like every day and really inspecting them. And I have not found lice on any of my other chickens. Now I'm still treating them all because I know that if there was such a big infestation on one of my chickens, then likely the others have them in some capacity. So ultimately I did want to share this with you guys, even though it was hard for me, you know, I felt really ashamed. But I also need to recognize that life isn't always about being at peace and being balanced, you know, it's kind of more about reaching for peace and reaching for balance. You know, I had a really wonderful teacher one time that told me, life is about just trying to have more joy than sorrow. And if you can have a little more joy than you have sorrow, then you're doing okay. And you know, that was such good advice because a lot of times it's like, we feel like everything needs to be perfect. And you know, I need to be happy all the time and I need to show you that I'm happy all the time, but that's not what life is about. And I do feel more joy than I do sorrow. And the chicken yard brings me a lot more joy than it does sorrow. I did have a lot of sorrow that day, but we got 
through it and that's what matters. So I ended up treating ET with pyrethrum, um, which is not completely benign. I do feel a little bit conflicted about it, but it's what I had on hand. It was the best option for me in that moment when I was in that emergency. But if you wanna see some other treatment options that you can use in your flock, all you have to do is click right here. It's 100% friendly backyard chickens, education and entertainment, and I know you're gonna love it. And I'm, I'm itching right now, <laughs> just talking about lice. <laughs>